Coming up in this video, I'll show you how I painted the Night Watch units for a Song of Ice and Fire miniature game. Hey everyone, my name is Jarrett. Welcome back to Mini Junkie. So I've really been taken with the Song of Ice and Fire miniature game, although I really wish it had a shorter name. The miniatures, there's something about them that really have caught my attention. I, I am a big Game of Thrones fan, of course, mostly the show. And while I did like the Starks and Lannisters that came in the starter box, the new starter set, which is Nightwatch themed, I definitely think is, is cooler. And I think the common consensus online is that these miniatures are a little crisper and better detailed than the ones in the original starter set. And it's not clear why that is, um, but it does seem to be the case. Especially you can notice it around their faces that there's a little more detail, it's a little sharper. Now it's possible that that comes at the cost of needing some more um, what do you call it, mold release agent, because I did notice when I was priming some of them that it would react and, and at least one of them, it actually, the primer really beat it up on. It was quite, quite surprising actually. So I would recommend washing these with some dish soap if you can. I will say, you know, the Night Watch, they're, they've taken the black and they are largely wearing black, including the fur. Like if you look at photos here, I'll, I'll put a couple photos up. You can kind of see that really the focal point's going to be their face that's really the bright area of, of attention on the models um, and that so i'll explain once i get into the tutorial how i try to approach having an army of guys all dressed in black and still try to make that interesting and a little bit of variety visually i don't spend a ton of time on them because there's about 36 guys between the three units 12 guys in each unit so i do um, a lot of speed speed techniques for these guys so i want them to look good but generally speaking, the visual impact's gonna come from them as units on the table, not from each individual guy being beautifully painted, although that wouldn't hurt. That's not what we're going for today. And because of that, this is probably the most dry brushing I'll ever do in a video, because there's a lot of dry brushing going on in these 36 guys, because I found that the fastest and easiest way to get a nice look on them, um, given the kind of paints I was using. Hey, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing if you're interested in the hobby of painting miniatures for board games and war games. Click the bell notification so you don't miss anything. All right, that's enough preamble. Let's get into the painting. Here's a look at the three units I painted using this technique. Also, I can see that I missed the pouches and bags on the captain, so I will fix that. All right, guys, so I'm starting out with a black primer, and I'm not doing a Zenithal Prime or anything like that. The primer I use is Vallejo Black Airbrush Primer. I'm quite happy with it. I do see some debate about it online, but uh, I find it's nice and black and has a, a very sturdy finish. To make each guy look a little different, I'm going to be dry brushing different parts of their kit with different colors, as you see here. And I'm going to be using this size of a dry brush. So let's start out with Stegodon scale green. And I'm going to just start dry brushing that right over the cloak. Remember, there's 36 of these guys and they're going to all be lined up on trays. And no one's really going to be scrutinizing the neatness and perfection of each cloak or cape or armor or anything like that. That said, you should try to be neat. So now I'll take Incubi Darkness. I'm going to do the same thing, dry brushing onto the cloak. But I'm going to do it for, and you know, in each case probably maybe six guys, seven guys. I'll do one area of them with this color. So the cloaks on also the veterans. And then for different guys, I'll use this color on the pants or the front arm or things like that. So by dry brushing each color on different parts of several of the different guys, I create um, more variety visually in the unit than just using the same color on the same part of the armor every single time. Here I'm using GW Eschen Gray. And then I use uh, some Dark Reaper is also a nice color for pulling out some black uh, in terms of highlights. And again, try to keep it neat, but it is going to look dry brush for sure. Thunderhawk Blue is definitely a lighter one than all the others. So I was a little less um, sort of firm with it. I just used it, I brushed it on a little bit lighter um, because it could end up looking blue gray if you use too much of it. I even got a little crazy and tried some experiments. Here I'm using Hull Red to do a black highlight, but in the end that just looked like brown armor. So I am going to come back later and fix that up with some washes and stuff because I really just want these guys mostly to be wearing black. Here I'm using coal black. Coal black is an excellent one to use for highlighting the, the original black. Use that on several different cloaks and chunks of armor and stuff. Experimenting again, I use Vallejo Model Color Black Green. I actually liked how this turned out and I didn't use it quite as much uh, on quite as many guys, but I did like it. 
I mentioned that the hull red was too brown, so I did come back with GW Nuln Oil and wash over it. The Nuln Oil will tint the armor below a bit more dark, so it'll help it blend in with the black look. Ultimately for this many faces, I found a base of Bugman's Glow using a, a brush to be the easiest. You do want to thin it down just a little. Uh, two thin coats on this many guys is going to be really, really tedious. So I was just using slightly thinned Bugman's Glow, trying to only use one coat. Some of these guys do have bare hands, so now's the time to base coat the flesh of those as well. I did decide to use a little more color on the fur uh, mantles they're wearing. Um, but still keep it as dark as I could. So for example, here I'm using Rhinox Hide to dry brush that fur. Uh, I also tried Doom Bull Brown, which is probably about as light as I was willing to go. And even then I was I was like, mm, they're supposed to be black, but whatever. Uh, Dryad Bark is another good example where you're gonna get, you know, it'll show the fur, it'll show that it's there. Um, it's not gonna overwhelm it. Storm Vermin Fur is a nice choice for this. Okay, I lied. I guess I went a little lighter. I used Steel, Steel Legion Drab for some of them. Uh, really wanted that fur texture to show um, without getting too bright, like a you know beige fur. But yeah, I went you know I did go a little bit lighter with the Steel Legion Drab, for example. And even Mechanica Standard Gray can be used because um, that'll look like a darkish gray fur. Now I use Chainmail, which is like a Rune Fang Steel. I paint all the sword blades and some of the belts and buckles and things like that. For the chainmail and the hilts of the swords, I used boiler black. Um, I think Ash Barker mentioned that these guys probably wouldn't have gold, and I agree with that. Some of the men have um, trim around fur trim around their sleeves or their cloaks. I just used storm vermin fur and just lightly brushed it on so as to leave a little bit of dark in the recesses, but you can't really do a heavy dry brush without wrecking the black you've done. Now, the black you worked on previously is going to have marks on it at this point most likely from painting the base or painting other parts so you just fix that up with some black ink and I also ran some of the black ink into some of the deeper folds on the cloaks and capes uh, just to enrich the shadows. Also at this point wash all the flesh with Reichland Flesh Shade. I didn't film it. Now I'm going to use various browns to paint the hair. Uh, here I'm using Rhinox Hide and I'm just doing a straight paint um, from from the pot with a little bit of thinning uh, onto the beard and the mustache and the hair and not, um, you know, just try to be neat. Try not to get it onto the flesh. If you do, you can correct it with a little bugman's glow without too much trouble. With the really dark hair, I pretty much am just going to paint it on once and not try to highlight or wash it as far as I can recall because it's so dark and there's so many guys and they're so small. You're not really going to notice too much difference. You're just going to notice that they have brown hair. But for some of the men, I did a base coat of Steel Legion Drab on their mustache, beard, and hair with the intention of coming back later with either a brown or sepia Vallejo Game Ink wash, which would then create some of that sense of strands and, and tint the color of the Steel Legion Drab to be a bit darker. And again, this is to create some variation in the hair that you're gonna see within the unit. For guys with black hair, which was a few of them, uh, I just used some of the black ink I had left over from where we were making corrections to any mistakes and when we were creating some darker shadows I just used that blank black ink to pencil in their hair and their mustache and beard. Here I'm using Mornfang Brown. Again with the Mornfang Brown I'm not trying to highlight or shade it I'm just using this as a single base coat to paint the hair and whatnot. Here's an example where I'm washing um, the Steel Legion Drab hair with sepia. You'll see how it darkens the hair and creates the sense of shading and strands. And then having saved a few of those guys with the Steel Legion Drab, uh, I come in with brown ink, which is going to create a different effect than the sepia ink, which is a much darker brown in the end. I wanted the veterans to have grayish or graying hair, but not like be like stark white kind of thing. Uh, so I did use various shades of gray with the intention later of coming back with Nuln Oil and giving those all a wash. For example, Dawnstone, um, Eschen Gray, colors like that. Colors like Stav Skaven Blight Dinge, that's one example. Mechanicus Standard Gray, it's almost like a bluish gray but it works okay for the hair here. And again, we are planning to come back and give this a wash of, uh, of the Nuln Oil to help darken it down and create some sense of shading in the hair itself. Obviously be careful applying this and try not to get it on the flesh tones that you've created uh, on the face. So guys, I screwed up and I think I lost the footage of painting the hilts, like the, you know, the little ropey hilts. 
uh, on these guys. And so, again, for variety, I just use a bunch of different browns. Just grab whatever browns you want and paint the handles of their of their swords and daggers and things like that. There's nothing special to this step. And I didn't even wash them or highlight them because there's so many of them. Uh, and that's a very small detail. Back to the painting. Some of the guys have leather wraps on their swords. I base those with Karak stone, as you can see here, with the intention of then giving them a wash with sepia ink, which creates some of the separation between the bands and darkens it as well. Carefully painting 36 faces is not my idea of a fun time. So what I did is I just went for maximum, um, well, not maximum, but for a lot of contrast and brightness because the faces are really the thing that's going to stand out when your guys are on the table. Uh, with all this black armor and black cloaks and stuff. So I used Cadian Flesh Tone, a little bit of thinner in it, I think, or water, I can't recall exactly, but just, you know, obviously not straight out of the pot. And all I'm doing is I'm highlighting tops of hands, fingers, um, top bridge of nose, tip of nose, um, eyebrow ridges and cheekbones, and then leaving some shading under the cheeks and in the eye eye sockets, etc. I'm ne I'm not going to paint the eyes on any of these because it's just not worth the effort. So here's what they look like when they're finished with some matte varnish and some basing done. You can see the basing technique I use in one of my other videos. I'll try to put a, a link here. Uh, the only difference being I didn't use texture paste this time. I just used the actual texture that's, uh, you know, molded right into the bases and trays. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how these turned out considering there's a ton of dry brushing involved. But um, it's, a, you know, when you're painting an army like this and they're all kind of the same, it could get very monotonous very quickly. And it can kind of kill your hobby mojo if you're not careful. So I, I wanted to get these guys done fast but have them look good and have them look like there's a lot of variety despite them all having taken the black and wearing effectively black armor, black cloaks, and black fur. Hopefully you uh, like how these turned out. Subscribe if you aren't already, and I bet you are. Please like and share as well if you if you can or if you feel so inclined. For the next video, I'm probably going to do G or Mormont, uh, one of the characters, and I'll spend more time on him despite effectively going for a black look as well, but definitely spend more time because he's a character. We'll see you then.